you've had your five shots, we'll be even! So did you, Bolshevist pig! Only one way to end this. The manly way. Pikachu, I choose you! Ah, yeah, Pikachu is now match for my water gun, the Squirtle! Welcome to a new episode of AATV. You might wonder why we used Pokemon for our opening get instead of our usual insults. That's because we ran out of stereotyped jokes about Russians and Germans. And it has absolutely nothing to do with death threats from Russian and German as of community. Yeah, Germany. Ray Russia. This is the Cita Lab Mosina Gun Sniper, a replica of the Russian World War II M89-130 sniper rifle. It costs about 500 US dollar or 560 euro in Europe. It comes with a PU scope, a sling and a plastic bayonet. It weighs 4.3 kg and has a very sturdy overall feel to it. It's pretty much what you would expect and is very close if not identical to the real steel version. Speaking of steel, everything that's not wood or brass on this gun is made of steel. The finish of the steel, brass and scope is dead on and has a bit of a used rough look as it should be. The woodstock, on the other hand, is nearly too beautiful and too bright. Not that I would complain about nice looking stuff, but WW2 reenactor airsoft us will probably darken the wood to make it look more realistic. It also has the most important markings and stamps on it and, sorry collectors, the scope and receiver serial numbers are not matching. This is the latest variant of the Marushin Mauser Car 98K. It's a shell ejecting 6mm BB version, but more of that later. It costs about 450 US dollar or 500 euro in Europe. On first sight, it looks beautiful, but it better don't look too close. The stock is real wood, but there is nearly no steel on the gun, except for the front side hood and the bayonet rail. The rest is either aluminum or plastic. Even the actual receiver is made of plastic. It weighs about 3 kg, which is a bit too light, but it still feels okay when you're taking aim. The markings are okay -ish. It has the Reichsadler on the receiver and the butt cap, but also rather big Marushin markings on the left side. One of the few downers of the rifle is the strange magazine. To load the BBs you have to open this flap. Now pull the string all the way back and fill in 10 BBs in here. Let go of the string and close it. Well, I can live with that solution, but it's not really comfy to reload into combat, especially if you're wearing gloves. Oh! And in case you're running out of ammo, you still got the plastic bayonet. Just push it up here to the side and you're good to step. Oh, oh. You see, that is a hard plastic bayonet and not rubber, so your other players probably won't like it if you start stabbing them with it. Oh. For aiming, you can either use the iron sight or the 3.5 magnification scope. You gotta be pretty accurate with the eye relief because of the small diameter of the scope. The scope adjustment dials are pretty easy to turn and don't have clicks. But since you're going to use this just for airsoft, this is actually more a pro than a con. The hop up is easily reachable. There is no safety on this rifle, so you better watch your trigger finger. The most in the gun is spring powered. The pull with the standard spring is not too hard, but the power using 0.2 gram BBs is just 300 FPS. To make it shoot stronger, you can install any automatic electric gun spring, but you have to disassemble the complete gun to do so. And also, if you install a stronger spring, the pull will be much harder. The Mosin uses a 6.03 precision barrel and therefore the accuracy is pretty good. After you have installed a stronger spring, hitting man sized targets at 50 meters should be no problem. As mentioned earlier, the Mauser uses shells. One 6mm BB goes in the shell and five shells in the gun. The Mauser comes with a quick loading clip and five shells. It needs some practice to use it. Put the clip in here. Now push the clip a bit back and the shells down. If you don't press the clip back, the shells will block and you may hurt yourself. After that's done and it didn't cut off your fingers, fill the gas tank in the bolt of the Mauser. Green gas is okay, but red gas will probably damage the parts up for some time. The safety does work, but it's missing the middle position of the real steel mauser. The hop-up is hidden under the rear side. The power is 400 to 440 FPS using green gas and 0.2 gram BBs. 
the fluctuation in the power is not that good for precision. Because of its MBB design, the gas tank should last at least for 30 shots. The shell mechanism is not that great. The shells aren't ejected, they stay in the rifle. That's good if you don't want to lose your shells, but bad if you need to fire fast. But there's a technique for that. Oh, and don't push the bolt forward too fast, because the mouse tends to misload the third shell. The most in a gun is definitely worth the money if you're a fan of World War II designs or simply like no guns. The possibility to upgrade its power makes its skirmish worth it, but you better carry a sidearm with you in case you ain't got the time to use the weird reloading mechanism. Oh, and of course, because people don't like to get stabbed using plastic bayonets. The Mauser is a half decent rifle. The wood looks good, but the plastic parts are a no-go for a rifle in this price category. Also, the shells may add to realism, but it only checked like on the real steel Mauser, which takes a lot of the fun away. Now that's it for this stereotype and some free episode of ATV. And now that it's over, there's just one thing left to say. You won't got gargling, mafia, violent, communist. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't you want to say, you full of joy, hardworking, honest man who lives in a country full of beautiful women? No, that's not what I wanted to say. Wait, is that my captive girlfriend of today's newspaper in this picture? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, then that's exactly what I wanted to say. Thank you for reminding me. Here, Russia. Yay, Deutschland.